Hello, this is Jeremy Brown with Salient Consulting. We're taking a look at the Web Viewer Integrations Library. In previous videos, we've looked at how the file is set up, we've looked at the many features of the file, and we've looked at how to manipulate a particular integration. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to push an integration from this library into your own custom app. Let's get started. So pushing an integration from here to a custom app is the reason why this library was built. We're going to look at the data tables integration. Go to the demo and just review what it does. Got a nice here list of, it looks like, I think 466 records. These are records from FileMaker from a table. And this integration allows me to change the number of records that I can view at once. It allows me to sort by columns. And it even allows me to search. I could type in, I want to find all the CEOs that are in Texas, for example. Very nice functionality built into this integration. All right, so let's say I wanna put this into my custom app. We're gonna do that now. We're gonna to go to the code view and let's just review the notes quick about this integration. It shows a list of records. It can have any number of columns. And let's see the features. We went over those a bit ago. The dev notes say some information about how this could be an alternative to a list view. There is a price to pay, however, in that the script has to gather the data. So that's definitely an issue. Uh, it looks like this table gathers the ID of the record in column zero, but it's not visible. We don't see the IDs here and so forth. We've got two scripts being used. We've got the script used in the FMP protocol. That's what happens when I click on one of these. It runs a script in FileMaker. It opens up a detail view and so forth. And we've got a data collection script, or in this case, scripts. And these are the scripts that just collect the data and format it correctly, as you see here, and push it into the correct field. And we can see the code here. In the previous video, we took a look at how to manipulate one of these, and that is an important step. If this look doesn't work for your particular custom app, you can make some changes here before you do the export. But now we're gonna go right to the export. So we've got a handy little button up here that says export the code and it opens up some steps that you can follow to push this integration. And I tried to list all the steps in order and give you some important information about what to do. So let's walk through these and we'll do it in real time here. Review the structure in your data tables. This just brings up the fields where I write if there's any special fields needed for this integration in either the data table or the HTML table. Doesn't look like there's anything here. So we're gonna export this code from the record. This button simply exports the code for this one record. So you're gonna get a one record HTML.fmp12 file, and it's been placed on your desktop. All right, so let's, uh, let's just take a look at that. I'm gonna open it up, and sure enough, what this export script did is it simply exported all of the fields that you're going to need for this integration to work. It exported that template field, the three CSS fields, even though in this case, there's only one CSS field that has data in it, all three JS fields, and the three data fields. Now this is a key point here. It did export the sample data that you see in my integration. So you're going to get 466 rows in your integration. And I chose to do that simply because it allows you to see this integration working before you hook up any other scripts. It exported the jQuery min library because we needed that, and it exported the script name that's used in the callback, in this case, GTRR people. All right, so the next step says, import the code found in that HTML file into your custom app. So I've got a custom app here called people test and we're going to simply import what I exported from here. So I'm gonna to go to manage to import that particular file, and I'm going to set it to import into a new table called HTML, all right? All the fields get pushed over. Go ahead and import all of these fields as it is, even if they don't have any data. We'll take a look at why in just a moment here. So we do an import, it imported one record, and there we go. So in my custom app, 
I've got all the data that needs to run the integration. All right, so now let's take a look at step four. It says we need a calculation field in my custom app. That's the only thing that didn't get brought over because importing does not create a calculation field. Luckily, however, we have a nice button here that allows you to copy what you need in the calculation field. So I'm gonna press copy. It's been put to my clipboard, and now I'm gonna go over to my custom app Go to that HTML table and add a new field called HTML calc. Make it into a calculation field. Paste in that text that I copied from my library and now we're set. Again, data two doesn't have anything in it. Neither does data three, but they're still in the calculation. All right, so now I'm set. So I've got my calculation field set up. Now I'm gonna skip step five for just a moment and go right to step six. It asked me to create a web viewer in the HTML page. So I'm gonna do that quick here. And I'm simply going to replace this and have the web viewer point to that calculation field. Press okay. And if everything goes correct, let's see here, go into browse mode, there we go. So now the data that I've got here is showing and this integration is working perfectly. All right, so at this point, you need to make a decision about what to do because obviously this data is my test data. I'm just gonna clear it out because that's not what I want to have in my custom app. I need to have a script in my custom app that gathers the data. In this box here, it gives some information about that. It tells you the name of the scripts that I'm using to gather the data and you can see the information right here of how it should be formatted. It just reminds you that you have the option to copy and paste the scripts from this library into your solution, or you can write your own scripts. However you do that, the formatting needs to be set up this way. So in this particular case, the header row needs to be added, and in the script, in each row of data needs to be formatted in this, in this way. So you can simply copy and paste from one to the other. If you do that, you're gonna to need to make sure you import custom functions because my scripts sometimes use custom functions to gather the data, like execute SQL custom function or so forth. So gathering the data is important and you have a couple methods for doing that. And if you don't wanna copy and paste it, you can simply go into my scripts, find that particular script, it's called gather people. And you can look and see how I wrote this out. I tried to give it some good comments so that you can know what is happening in this case. For this particular integration, this is the parent script. The subscript does the work of first creating the, the header row in the correct format and then formatting each record as I loop through them. So you're welcome to do any copy pasting here. It doesn't look like we have any custom functions, so the custom functions aren't vital here. The second script we need to work with is the callback function. This integration uses a script called gtrr underscore people, and here's what it does. It grabs the ID of the row that they're on, that they clicked on, the first column found in data one, and opens up the detail view. So this is just a typical script that grabs the ID, passes it to this script, and finds that particular record. So again, you can copy or paste mine. Let's just take a look at that. GTRR people. You can see that it's grabbing the script parameter and it's just finding it. So you can either choose to copy and paste mine or write your own in your custom app. And finally, you can just review the dev notes for any other information about it so that you know more about what's going on. But like I've just shown you here, this integration is fully set up in your custom app. And we did it in less than 15 minutes. All we need to do is get the data one field to hold the data from our custom app and we're done. As I said before, this library is meant to make it so easy to push an integration from here into your custom app. So that's it. That is the FileMaker Web Viewer Integrations Library. It is my hope that it's very useful to you. It gives you great ideas about what you can do with the Web Viewer, and it allows you to quickly set one up in your custom app. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to our webpage for more posts on this library and other great techniques. 
have a great day.